apparently. Now, and specifically, Wilkie really does not like coastline. <laughs> for for good reason, and he does not do so great on it. No, it's like, oh, but the middle is so open, we can't really do anything with it. Anyways, community vote. What do you guys think? Is it going to be the French superpower or mixed French superpower? Or is it going to be Ents the full Finns? Well, wow, look at that uh, public support. Ents was 62%. Yeah, that's a lot right. of confidence in Ents. I'm, honestly, I wouldn't... I would agree with it that much. I think the game is a lot closer than what you'd think, just because both the stream and Ents performed very meh at Dream Hack Winter. Yeah, I mean, they both had a fair amount of change-ups in terms of players over time, so... Yeah, and also, Le Stream lost the Polish team that was there, and finally, Poland has an international representative, which is pretty interesting. Very exciting. All right. Poland. Uh, we are getting ready to go here in the matchup, so... Yep. Just getting ready for it. Ents versus Le Stream. I'm pretty excited for it, actually. Finally seeing Ents back in Pro League and the changes on Le Stream. Yeah. Not having Rinchair on Livin, who kind of have moved on now, it's kind of be an oddity. Right? It's definitely going to be odd. We're definitely going to miss Livin's interviews, at the very least. <laughs> so, <laughs> Legendary interviews, yeah. that is for sure. Well, either way, that would assume that they win this, which, according to the community, they will not. So, we may be seeing Wilkie's face instead, perhaps, or Chate. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people have been saying, Oh, Le Stream, the squad, might be a bit too frag-heavy. And to some extent, after especially watching them at DreamHack Winter, it very much is a possibility. Now, this is why you have oh. seen those changes done by the squad's uh, coach, Capel, who is basically given, like, a blank check to do whatever he wants. Or the squad, Capitao, an interesting ban here. Yeah. From Ents. A very interesting start. I mean, the, uh, freeing up the Lion ban definitely makes uh, a lot more opportunity to make some other more targeted bans. So in this case, that is definitely going to be something that will make smoke planting a little bit more difficult. And Buck makes a lot of yeah. sense, so bottom floor defenses are going to be a lot more viable now. Yep. As Buck actually brings even more to the table now, uh, not just destroy, able to destroy the top floor of border as much as humanly possible, but also being able to deal with bandit batteries that are set up on the entryway in the wall through to armory. But also that's something that the Ash can do, the Zofia can do, and even the IQ without anything. Hell, even a grenade is more than enough. But Buck is such a flexible operator. Now, it's got to be Mira. Is it going to be my, the Echo? Mira. Not surprising. I can imagine that with the Buck band, we might see a fair bit of sledge perhaps taking his place, depending on the bomb site and the attack. So, so, you know, you'll still get the grenades plus some of the utility, depending on whether they're attacking down or up. But uh, Buck is definitely useful to be able to do from below if they are playing a top floor site, as well as a lot of times just quickly opening up the uh, the wall from the uh, east stairwell hallway there into the office. It's definitely something you see a lot of, so not going to happen here, but they will still have that sledge that I was just mentioning. We'll see if they go for any six picks, and they are going to... Chate is going to sneak over to Echo, something he plays pretty well. So that's not a big, huge surprise there. Mm -hmm. See how Alfalma does, switching over to this Thatcher, something we were talking about was greatly lacking in the last matchup. Definitely important on this one, especially with that Bandit in play, which they do see is going to be a thing now, and Ace's IQ going to be that much more useful to help back that up, alongside especially spotting the Yokai drones that he doesn't even know are a thing yet, as that was sixth pick on too, so Defenders even more useful for him there. By hmm. We'll see, of course, going to start Armory Lockers first, as there's usually not a ton of reason to vary off of that, unless you have a good vet defense you want to go with, which is uh, definitely pretty viable a lot of the times, depending on the operators in play. Seeing a lot of Legion today, which is not unusual at all. Legion definitely in a very good place at the moment for a lot of teams. Very yeah. useful. I was a very flexible operator on the defense. Uh, the impact grenades definitely add just more on top. The utility is very good, but you know having the impact just means you have even more flexibility uh, with the operator. Shate here on the uh, role of the Echo. We've seen Shate in the past running Mira quite substantially. Uh, both operators in general just anchors work out very well here for the Finn and uh, well, one of the four Finns on the squad. Yeah. Something we're also seeing a lot of uh, today as well, just in general, is mute play. It's really come up there and then adding the SMG 11 just increased that I think even further. I'd like to check actually, uh, Marcio, can, can we just see if uh, Wilkie is running the mute with the SMG 11? Please. No? Okay. So Uno Meister, here, uh, that face went. Uh, it looks like uh, he is running the SMG-11. There you go, shotgun. thank you very so much. It makes a lot of sense. I look like he's using the shotgun as well to open up some holes for himself to be able to fire down into the entry, which is, unfortunately for them, Uno's coming from the other side. 
So not going to get anything on that just yet. And of course, uh, here there's the bandit slabbiness on this that roll, so Uno can destroy any utility from below. Uh, now the attack, though, is coming in from the opposite end. Damage done to Hicks for Shate playing oh. all the way in the middle and rise. <laughs> Where did that grenade even come from? Was it from below? It might have been the... Uh, yeah, it wasn't the uh, down the chimney one. It was down... It was down the chimney. Dude, I didn't see it up there. Hmm, nice. That was very well thrown, I have to say. So, Slebin is down and now taken out, and there's no bandit batteries that can save the day here. So, the office has been completely foregone. Shate has fallen back and is just holding Attack off in the main hallway. And uh, Uno is just looking down. There's no one in Fountain. Usually there's someone that plays in the back. Now there's some murder holes for them to use. And there you go. The Echo has been spotted but not killed. Half health here, Shate. As Uno will launch a breaching charge all the way to the back. And Uno will finish off his former teammate here, Shate. Boonsi trying to contest, but the grenade will bounce around in front of him. And he'll just have to remaneuver and put himself on the edge of the archives room. Oh, so far, not the best hold here coming out. And there goes one more. Aces taking it down. Aces and Uno's both very strong fraggers coming into this and both playing operators that could do very well at that. All right, Wilkie with the shotgun in hand. Now you want to play the long range. You got to need that SMG 11. Rise will take down Bootsy. 5v1 here. Wilkie, last man alive. The IGL is taken down and Uno will again take the round for the squad. This team working out perfectly here. Seems like the... Even from the first round, it looks like the aggression that Lashim are able to bring is really breaking ends in this situation. Yeah, definitely some opportunities there where it, it could have been a situation they might have been able to fight back a little bit, but just they seemed a little unprepared for that aggression. There was a couple of times you saw Shate not firing quick enough. You saw uh, Wilkie as well just not reacting fast enough to that push on him. It's uh, it seeming like, but this is the first round, right, where they're still yep. warming up, things like that. I would imagine it might change a little bit in the future rounds, but that is not a good start for end so far. Gonfi going to be switching off that Legion to bring the Jaeger. Should be a little bit better to protect against those grenades, as we saw that was a little bit of a problem for them last round. Attackers need to locate and we'll see them going off. to Armory Lockers again. The question is, will the stream go for another office attack, or will they go to attack from the usual side on the actual lockers? Looks like Slevin trying to set up a little bit to be able to better protect over here. Hopefully okay. he doesn't get naded out this time. I think he's just going to reinforce the center. There you go, and just leave the sides open. Yeah. No, uh, oh, nice. completely wrong. I wonder why. Well, it looks like they're going to definitely reinforce the entire wall. But again, we'll see if they actually go for an armor side push. Now, they both ha have both Bandit and Mute, so they can stop a lot of walls from being open, potentially, with uh, both the batteries and the jammers. We'll see if they decide to go with that. But they obviously do need to protect the armory locker's wall if that is going to be the attack point for the stream, which it was not at all last time. But usually not a great idea to attack from the same side twice in a row, as uh, Ents would likely be better prepared this time. Yeah, and here's the thing. This is border where, even though it seems like it's not really flexible, there's there's quite a few ways. So even through the middle of the round, you can switch, switch around the entire setup that you've had. Oh, Uno should have spawned the player there. And he did take a bit of damage, though. Yeah. So obviously you can you can see a bit of that. He saw the leg, uh, the upper thigh of the Jaeger. As uh, Gofi will just have to fall back. Now Uno will pin for his teammates. And drone should come in. Grenade was thrown on it to Gofi, I'm sure. Oh, well, here comes flashes. Not to burn any ADSs. And I believe it was uh, picked up there. I don't know if the Jaeger is trying to juggle his ADSs in the back, but definitely trying to put pressure on the Jaeger and again CCTV is a very important spot for you to hold and burning as much time as possible definitely does help ends in their quest taking this defensive round. Shate is of course here as well to help out Gomfi. I'm not sure if he's going to be using a Yokai drone to help him out. ADS has already been burned. Shate shooting in the back but not really able to find a kill. Slevin will be the one to land one and even the second here from Shate. Wilkie's trying to fight against Hicks but Wilkie will fall to the floor. Alphama will get one and Hicks just refrags. Takes down Wilkie and Alphama with another one. On to Gomfi. Shate is removed and will try to enter through the break room. They'll find one of the bearing nine and then fall back to try and use that shield to his advantage. Fire a shot right behind him, but he is still alive nonetheless. 2v2, but low on health is Hicks. It's very odd how this round just turned from advantage for Enz to lose team and then all the way back to Enz now in the health advantage. 
Yeah, Hicks very, very low at this point. It's going to have to be careful. They did have enough time, or they still do have enough time, really, to go for a reset on him. But the fact that the smoke yeah. and the echo are left alive here means once he does finish this reset, it's time's going to be really tight going in there unless they can frag at least one of those defenders first. And that's the thing. This is the decision you have to make. Do you split up or go in one way? And remember, those jokers are still available, or at least one of them, and the second one is going to get killed. This will deny information as Ensis, uh, fallen teammates really, will try and get information, gather and send it back to Boonsi and Shate here. The old school Bob players on the dagger. squad. Shate, no information to play to fire against the Havana in the back, and if only he knew. One pull of the trigger could have ended the life right there. The IQ will go down. Ace is on the floor. And the Havana is trying to peek here against Shate. Has to go for the reload. 12 seconds on the clock, but Hicks has to go against Dead even a shotgun against him. Shate's on the floor. He's trying to bait his opponents in, and Shate will find the kill. The MP5, and beautiful play here from Ence. Just duoing and knowing. Okay, we have the time on our side. We're going to try to just burn it as slow as possible and force our opponents into us. Definitely a good round for Shate, though, able to land a lot of those important shots and make it count definitely a lot better than the previous round. It was, like you said, a lot of trades back and forth, and they did go for the locker side push, but just losing so many people fighting over that break room, I don't think they expected it to be as heavy an engagement there as possible. You know, once they found Gumpy and were trying to pressure him, they thought, okay, you know, we'll, we'll put some pressure on him, we'll do what we can to take him out, and then we'll have break room control and, uh, and CCTV control, and it just did, did not work out like that at all. It just turned into a flurry of trades back and forth, leaving into that 2v2, and a 2v2 trying to push into the lockers with both the delay operators left alive Defenders like that. Thankfully, at least one of the attackers was still like, he was able to take out both of the Echo drones, yeah. which I think did give them the possibility of being able to make that work, but Nonetheless, you didn't even have to see any smoke canisters come out to try and fight that. Just because, I mean, the Echo uh, Shate was just doing such a good job holding the angles there. And it's such a tight funnel to come through into the uh, the bomb site right there. It's just, there's not a whole lot you can do. But we'll see how Vents works out. It's attacking. For a lot of people, this match is kind of, um, I don't know, very um, pulling on the heartstrings. Just because a lot of fans are here for Uno and the French scene for Le Stream and wanting to see, how, very curious, how things will work out for the French squad after being picked up by the new organization, the change they had. But also a lot of people are very happy to see Ents back in Pro League. Again, yeah. these guys are former Pro League champions and Chate is a former, former world champion. As we'll clear, clear it up, everything after year one the only way for you to be for you to be considered a world champion is to win at the Invitational. Yeah. And Chate is one of the very few people to join that exclusive club. Not to mention some of these people go back uh, on Ensco all the way back to oh. season one. Oh, I remember yeah. the old Wilkie, Boonsi, Jonas run out on House <laughs> where Jonas oh, completely mucked it up. It, it is a highlight from the from the first year. And I think they were playing against Kix's old team in that matchup. Yeah, that was a, that was a fun one. Some of those maps were definitely interesting in the early days, that's for Attack sure. It, but yeah. it's good to see a lot of these people sticking stick around and even some of them coming back like Shate. So I, I, I never I never believe anyone claiming they're retired from this game because I haven't seen anyone be able to escape its gravitational pull just yet. No. And you know, speaking of which, K9 has announced his retirement. Yeah, temporary. It, He's I, in the doghouse. I I very much hope so, because uh, K9, if you guys don't know, he has had such a huge influence on not just North American uh, Siege, but also Bomb yeah. by yeah. well, you, said, you said going back to Kix's old team, that's... Basically, K9, K9 obviously one of the most well-known players by the esports community and well-loved for the amount of work that he's put in for Siege back in the oh. day. Look at the work done by Shate. He not only puts the band battery down, but also finishes off Uno. Is this a great spot here on the Ash early on? Now, what usually happens is that the Ash comes in from below and destroys those bandit batteries. And even with EMP available, somehow this is taking way too long, and C4 will miss. Well, nonetheless, he's just trying to delay as long as possible, right? His job isn't to hold that wall forever, just hold as long as he can. Wilkie getting a kill downstairs as well. This is not looking great for the stream, but at least they're able to take Wilkie down. However, at Boonsi, low, a little bit lower on health as well as Gomfi, so. They just are gonna have to push and, and use what manpower they have left to corner some of these guys and try and even things up a little bit if they can. Here, Alpha Ma on the reload of Thatcher and we'll try to move in to the actual site. Three players left alive for this team and Slepin is ready. Hicks will go down. Second 
smoke gas, gas canister is going to get used to slab it from above. It's just holding on the one entryway into the bathroom, and that's the diffuser on the floor. I found my will spray in. Cannot find Oh, there you go. Boonsi finally finished off. Oh, there's still the Jaeger Comfy here, just waiting by the servers. I found my checks the wrong position, and there you go. Easy kill for the Belgian. And Ents will secure their second round on the board. And that was a stark difference yeah the very first round remember what i said about them warming up yeah it's clearly the case they just needed that first round to warm up you know get to some of the reaction times up some of their their confidence and speed and uh, it's good though when when losing that first round you don't feel too much like oh you know what we're just we're doing terrible this is gonna go badly instead it's just like okay cool shake that off now we got the first round out of the way now it's time to start winning now of course they have to continue to change bomb sites though as you do have to play a third bomb site if you win two in a row so, customs it's going to be. Now, of course, uh, they could also go with tellers, which is certainly not uh, ruled out as uh, quite a few teams. The stream especially being one of those teams that originally was, along with Vitality, fairly good at that bomb site. Attackers but customs seems to have come back bomb. into the meta a fair amount. Let's see though if their lineup works for it. They're going to be bringing pretty similar lineup on defense to what they have been bringing so far. Somewhat similar on attack as well. Like I said, now with the uh, the buck out of play, we're just seeing a lot of sledge. So it makes sense. But also a lot of Thatcher, so this is good to see that uh, it's not going to be too much like the first match. It's just the lack of ability to take out a lot of gadgets. I feel like Thatcher is in a very important place yeah. in the current meta with operators, and even w without the, new two, the two new operators in play. Yeah, just because there are so many gadgets, right? So. Yeah. It, do, it does make sense, and comboing with the IQ means that you know, any play with an Echo or anything like that is yeah. just not going to be very easy to pull off. He's going to be that much more important the second Attackers half of the season, that's for sure. All right, we'll keep throw out his second to last black eye, as, of course, if you're defending downstairs in customs, you're going to need to hold on to the top floor CCTV for as long as humanly possible. That hatch, well, at least the two that look all the way down into the site is definitely something that you don't want to give up easily. And Ace is kind of distraught here, like, Uno, please don't shoot He's me. getting so close so many times on, on oh, both no. occasions. Like, they're very antsy to get in there and kill, but you know, both of them being the heavy frag players, like, mm -hmm. they are very heavy speed, three speed push-ins. It's just, it is uh, kind of the nature of the beast, but they do need to split up at some point. Going two men, they are very likely to shoot one another in the back of the head at some point, but Unfortunately, not shooting the Legion just yet as Slevin manages to sneak away. Now, there's a drone right in front of Uno here to give him the information, but it was shot down by Slevin. Not sure if there's somebody here to give him another one. And there you go. Ace is coming in from the side, and Slevin, oh my lord! He finds the shot through the soft wall. Usually, that wall is reinforced for this sort of play, but it's not in this case. And, you know, holes or not, they work both ways. They, I believe that I heard that somewhere. I think it was a fortune cookie. <laughs> He's still with this Claymore in hand as well. That's going to be important to get set up at some point because let's say he dies pushing a little more aggressively, having some kind of flank watch via Claymore is still going to be important. It's one of those gadgets that uh, is, when you pick it, you really need to have a, a good place and a good plan to put it down to make sure that you get uh, your mileage out of it just because you, you start to get low on man count towards the end. All right, we'll keep watching in from the doorway. There's still nobody in to contest. No, and so are on limited information. That's why, you know, having that... Um, the goo mines available plus Wilkie's black eyes definitely do help just because you can spot people using those and oh man Slebin with the goo and with a headshot aces will go down that's the second kill for Slebin the super power player I mean it's nice to see that you know he wasn't necessarily brought in as a heavy fragger but he's doing a good job against the two fraggers on the other team Yep, and that is very impressive, the amount of work that he's able to put here so far Hicks is gonna get spotted in the usual Wilkie spot Repelled will go down. Gonfi with one, but Gonfi and Slebin still super low on health. Rise the last man alive. So he'll take down one of the hatches. He's going to get spotted, but take no damage from Slebin, who will go down. No more Goo Mines available, but there was only one at that point. Oh, Wilkie going down a rise. What a drop. There's still the Diffuser right behind the wall, and what will happen? Will Shate give away his position? He's going to try to C4 right onto it, um, but no pickup. Rise is just going to go for the kills. C4 plays have just not been on point so far. Now they do hear him entering. There's a shotgun pointed right at him, and there you go. Shotte will find him right through the border guard window. It just se it seems like uh, Ents are just way more on point with the fragging power. Now they're, they're showing a lot of flexibility in the way they're playing. 
I mean, Slevin was a good example of it. The way he yeah. was just holding pretty much that small little office almost the entire time against two very aggressive, very strong operators to be playing against. And he's not exactly a three-speed on defense himself, but he's just playing his position. They even droned him out. They knew where he was. And he still was able to hold it effectively. It's just they seem to be doing a much better job after that first round of even communicating or of doing a better job of... Uh, positioning themselves against the way the attacks are coming down. It seemed like they might have got caught off guard and, and uh, by surprise a little bit more on the office attack than anything else. But they can't go back to the uh, that bomb site now, so we'll see attacks if it does go location. down that way again. I would imagine if you're the stream, you're going to be looking at, well, our attack towards the locker site did not do so great last time. Let's go back to what we did well, the office side, but then of course, ends can read into that. So, yep. if ends have a good defense set up for that office side, this could be the stream continuing to slide downhill till the uh, side switch. I have to say, ends are, you know, after that first round, things completely changed with uh, the Finnish squad here, and they're just able to read into the streams more aggressive play style. Seems to be working just because they're able to shut down the more aggressive players yeah, earlier on. And it seems like a lot of the other players aren't able to match the aggression. But I gotta say, Ryze's hatch drop, definitely a nice example of that aggression from a sledge player, especially to just hatch down, drop down exactly and land that shot the way he did. Is just, it does take a lot of confidence. So it didn't seem like he was too shaken by it. So that's still good for the stream that they're not so uh, demoralized yet by the rounds that they've lost. Yeah, and again, uh, I, I will have to double check on that, but uh, I have been told that a lot of the players from this team were moving to Paris, which is where the HQ of the company is, um, to play there together. But I'm not sure if they're doing that constantly or just for boot camp purposes. So nope. we'll have to double check and let you guys know, because it definitely does add an extra dynamic to the squad. It definitely does. It also can make communication a little bit better in some ways, and so hopefully that works out for them. But we'll keep... Oh. Already downed. However, traded for Rise. So Wilkie probably going to get picked. There we go. Getting picked up. Although the flashbang is going to slow that down a little bit. It is going to scare the squad for just a bit, but uh, shouldn't really be too much of a hindrance. Takes will pick up his uh, drone and Shate will take down Aces. All right, nicely done. Seems like uh, Ens and Shate specifically here on the Echo. Very content with just holding down the bottom Ooh. side and Alpha Mao will pre fire. Shate will go down. EMP is still available, which will take down the Bandit Batteries in the side, but. Slebben still has a battery ready to go. Well, still manpower advantage to Ents, though. However, Uno's still being alive. He really needs to get in there and do some fragging because the other two players kind of doing a support role right now, just trying to get this wall open. However, Slebben coming over, is he going to trick it in time? And nope, he will not. But he will not die in the process. That's the important part. He's still low on health, though. Quite a bit of time here to uh, work with this team, even with the man down. Slebin has taken a decent chunk of damage. Overall, in terms of health, very equal between the two squads. So Higgs is just going to drone in through exactly. Fountain. Not going to find anyone. Oh, there you go. He will find, finally, the smoke in the back. Gonfi is setting up with a uh, punch hole. And he can look all the way down. He has the comfort of knowing the hallway is kind of clear for him to play, even though he lost Shate who was yeah. uh, mostly setting up around here. That's the nice thing about having a lot of the manpower advantage as well, is with so few players left on the attack, you kind of can better have an idea where they're all at. All right, Gofi's still looking down as that position has been revealed for this team, at least the three players available. Bit of damage taken here by Alpha Maes. Uno has to be very careful to not dro drop and lose more time as he tries to go go back up. Bunsi set up with a shotgun as the all-time smoke main is still in. Wilkie will land the C4 on Hicks from below, I believe. And just nice. ready here. Alpha Ma will try to push into Bunsi. The fuse is on the floor, and shotgun will hit. He's on the floor, and last man alive is Uno, the old player here for Enz. I'll try to peek, and ooh. Timing not working out in his favor. Wow. wow. I, I Wilkie, Wilkie might be getting old, but those reflexes, my man, they are still there. Yeah, and that's that's him punishing his teammate for leaving. This is what you get. Yeah. A he is a tank the commander. There you go. He was the leader of Team Milosh. <laughs> and, of course, your commander. That's oh, Thank you. I've been promoted from scrub. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, I, good to hear. Of course, we all knew you were using that C4 to, you know, down the guy. Yeah, just to clarify things, I was trying to hit for the five damage for the memes. <laughs> Had I hit, you all would have been cheering. Okay? All right. He literally stopped to shoot my cap can trap, ironically enough. <laughs> but. 
I swear we don't bully him, bully him about this every day. <laughs> but the Not every day. <laughs> every other day. The, the, <laughs> the off-cast days here. <laughs> Alfama not doing too bad here, but Ryze also picking up. But surprisingly, the frag players of the team with one or two kills each is not a good indicator. And I got to imagine that's maybe just the the um, coordination really not being there. I mean, you saw like Uno and Aces, for example, stacking up on each other a lot, almost shooting each other. It just feels like maybe they don't have everything, all other kind of ducks in a row just yet. But uh, I do kind of miss the old uh, Hicks fuse rush. With a shield oh, on this yeah. map. But please, I don't want another no Thermite or Habana for that to happen. No, no. I, I would like to, for that to not to have to be the case for him to do it, but it would be fun to see you again. Yeah. Well, if you shield with the uh, pocket sniper rifle, EMM. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely uh, not fun to play against, as uh, we saw a lot of good shield play last match with Pengu on that Monty. So here we go, they're stacking up on each other again. They're not even sure which one of them shot the camera first. Just, I don't know, it just, it, it says to me they're not taking full advantage of uh, their frag pot. Oh, ooh, slamming Levin again! Is. We were talking about this today, actually, Corey and I. This is a setup that Latin America was doing yesterday, and Kixon and Taro very much highlighted the way that that rotation hole from the archives back into the office has been used so efficiently by spe specifically smokes on teams. Yeah. But here, just can rotate in, pop a shot, and then fall back, and he does have a lot of cover to work with. It's much better than playing inside of the office, and I really like that sort of adaptation that Ents are trying to do, and Slevin hits the perfect one, shutting down the spearhead of Listream's assault. Absolutely. And this is a case where he, he was able to hold up very well last time against an attack on here because he's able to push back to the small office, which is exactly what he's doing again. Just taking full advantage of taking his shots and running, using the angles that he has right here, as long as he can keep his hallway secure, which just unfortunately did not work this time. Ryze taking full advantage of the angle that he had. Now that uh, Slevin's down, should be a little bit better of an attack here. They are going to have to do some more killing potentially to make this work, but at least with Ryze still able to open up a lot of the holes in the floor, the hatches, things like that. Even if he dies, that does offer some opportunity, but Shate being left alive up here, I have a feeling this is going to come back to bite them. Now, as I said, he hasn't been too effective with his C4 in the past, but he still has it in hand just in case. Mm -hmm. Might be something that really ends up a little more critical later, but Ace is pushing him, cannot land the shots because Gompi, guess what? Hiding right around the corner. Such a typical Jaeger spot to be, too, for Vent's defense. And there you go. There's the wall that is just in the way of Hicks. Oh, no. Did he hit his teammate with it? or did He might it have, yeah. He might have even hit the he, floor it with did, it. It did. He took five damage. That's unfortunate. Oh, no. That's what I mean, that coordination. They're all just kind of getting in each other's way. And I think that uh, speaks to maybe needing to, you know, maybe do that workshop or now, whatever they need to do. In obviously, losing one x Kairos is not the end of the world, but having an extra one means you have an extra angle to play from the bathroom and look mm. all the way down into the workshop. It's, it always is good having more utility to use to your advantage. Alfama and Hicks will try to push in. Hicks will find one with the bearing nine, but not the second just yet. He'll be met with a boon sieve. A bash right in his face. The shotgun is going to be more than enough to dispatch the player, list team player here. Wilkie with a cross angle to hold on to the diffuser. As Rise understands the situation he's in, he gets sprayed through the wall, and Wilkie will finish off a rise and the first half will go the way of Ents in a massive fashion. 5-1 for the Finnish squad. As usual, the community has spoken. Ents coming wow. out swinging. I mean, we saw last night, for example, a lot of defensive sightedness. Whereas I wouldn't say that's been the case so far tonight, at least between the two matches. But if things switch around and swing back the other way, which they could for the stream, maybe they're able to collect themselves a little better because... Like I was saying, about their attacks, they were a little uncoordinated. They were stacking up on each other. They were getting in each other's way. Might not be the case for defense because they're able to play a little more patiently. They're able to kind of spend more time communicating more accurately mm -hmm. because they're not having to push in and take map control. They're not having to drone for each other the same way. They've got the, the Valkyrie, for example, coming out from Uno as a sixth pick. I mean, they could use with perhaps some, some other intel uh, in Echo, for example, would be a nice choice. But... Either way, if they can just collect themselves a little bit, get a bit more intel, and stay a little more calm, I could see this going a little bit more the the way of uh, the stream. But at the same time, the confidence coming out from Ents is still going to continue into this. Because even if they lose a round or two, they're still going to feel very, very confident after going five rounds in a row. Like, and confidence plays a, a big factor in this game, just in terms of 
If you have the communication and the coordination of a team to back up confidence, that confidence often turns into kills, or at least being able to play very confidently in an area and, and keep map control. Yeah. So we'll see if things switch around, though. But uh, I mean, Uno, in theory, should have some knowledge about how Ents plays, but I got to imagine they've shaken things up a little bit since he left, as he definitely seemed to be caught off guard a lot by Slevin, his replacement, ironically enough, on the attack. So, you know, maybe that's the thing is. Uh, Uno knew how the rest of Ents played, but just didn't know Slebin well enough. Hmm. It's weird because Slebin used to play on Niriki and before that on uh, on Motion Gaming, actually, which is a team that Ents scrimmed against a uh, decent chunk and also played against in local Finnish tournaments, even on LAN. Um, so, yeah, it's just the role that Slebin is filling here for the team is uh, definitely played very well, I have to say. like the. The, the, the way that he's playing the, um, the Legion and just able to exploit the over-aggressiveness mm -hmm. of Le Stream is very odd here. So Slevin, of course, is bringing the Ying. Gomfi will find the, fi uh, the first kill of the round. Rise will go down, and that's a huge loss. The Legion no, we were just talking about. Oh, man. That's a stark difference. Nice. Able to compare between the two players and the way that they are set up. Yeah. I'll be interested to see if Slebin gets the Candelas off. As a, a lot of Union players uh, will sometimes die before they're able to get full effect out of it. But no, he's going to get a kill and Candelas off here. Uh, two kills off of it as Alpha Mao. We'll only find one here on Gomfi, but just the Ash. That's someone that is okay to be lost, especially with three kills going down. Valkyrie Jaeger and, more importantly, the Legion being removed from play. Both SMG 11ers are still available with the Mute and the Smoke. We'll see how Ents try to play this one. And Maybe if Lestream can actually recover. They're hugging up here one by one, but Hicks taking some damage through the wall. Shate will finish off Alpha Man. Now all up to Hicks. He's going to chuck in smokes as far as humanly possible, running back into the fountain. But he is so far away from anything objective wise, which is. I, I know it's a bit of a surprise. Literally the whole point of the game. <laughs> it's going to be a bit complicated for him to try and go for the retake. As there's the drone next to him, he'll go for the knife and destroy it without using any bullets. Oh, he'll fire no. in the back, but unfortunately, that is just enough to reveal his position in Slebin. The super power player will get yet another one in the round. Ends a round away from victory. Something that, I mean, hey, you could have seen and said, oh, ends, you know, they're, they're pretty good. They're fired up for this. Always something that you're looking forward to. But this is a this is a view. One? I tell you, yeah, man, they, uh, they wanted to come out swinging. They, they, you know, much like Team Secret, right? They worked their way back up. They're gonna, they're gonna prove it. Man, Pro League just gets in every region, just gets better and better and better every single season. It that is, is the insane idea. the level of skill, yeah, that players have attained and the level of teamwork. Really Honestly, to it. the thing that worries me the most about that is is how impenetrable. Pro League could eventually get when it comes to just trying to compete with the people with this long standing of experience. Hey man, it's all about how good you are. Yeah. It's all about the W, it's all about practice, putting in the work, putting yeah. in the effort, and that's how you get to this level. It, I mean, it helps if you're Finnish as well, I think. Because uh, you, you get to go through uh, G2 Academy. <laughs> get your get your trading wheels. I mean, that's how Uno got in here. That's you know, how a lot, a lot of people got in here. Statistically speaking, in terms of Europe, Finland definitely has the most successful players in Siege. They might have the most successful players per uh, per capita or whatever, too, just because I don't think they have a huge population. No, there's like three and a half million Finns, something like that. Yeah. I mean, even back in the day, people that remember literally year one, season one and two, with Keito Mestari that used to play yeah. on the squad, who actually later on turned to swim for the Finnish national team in the Olympics. Back. <laughs> He's, done. He's done swimming. Protax used to play uh, you know, on on the squad as well. Now is more of a coach slash manager. So Yeah, he hasn't really left necessarily. Yeah, still so. there. You, you know, you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. That's basically Siege in a nutshell here. Yeah. So good luck leaving. But that's the nice thing is, uh, like I said, the long history of these players definitely mm -hmm. is, is nice to see like a lot of these people going back to year one, season one, but not everyone. So there's definitely some potential here, but at least we're getting underway in this potentially final round if uh, Enz continues to have their way. They are going to be bringing that Ying again for the stack on a site that I think favors it even more so. I mean, it was useful for attacking CCTV when you wanted to take to go to events, but even more so when trying to get into these lockers here if uh, you have something to back it up. However, they're not going to be bringing any smokes. 
to back it up, though. It is an interesting part because Smoke plus Candelas is even more of a party. Very true. But uh, you can still use the candelas in like timing them three, two, one. Yeah. Because obviously, the longer you hold the candela, it hits all the way up to a three second charge. I would love to see more gadgets in the future with timing elements to them like yeah, that. Yeah, actually, it's fantastic. Yeah, it does add an extra level of, uh, of I skill. How much you could cook the EMP nades? <laughs> well, EMPs kind of cook everything else, right? That's true. Ha, <laughs> got it. But uh, bandit tricking. Ah. Speaking of not being able to cook EMPs, and I think if you could cook them, then it would be much harder to ban a trick, but successful ban a tricking there, and they do not have like a redundant Haban or anything like that. So hopefully they still have one charge left, but okay. nice job, Wilkie. Uno just unable to win his gunfights. Very odd here is Wilkie. As you mentioned, we'll get the kill, and that's the removal that they needed. So now the cross angle cannot be contested, and the bandit cannot really do much against Thermite Charge. Slebin will have to fall back as Wilkie is more now on uh, a flank hold duty. There's one by half wall in the back and should get spotted there. And that's Alpha Mao on the bandit as the drones are going to get taken down. I mean, it's likely that even if he's able to hang out back in the half wall, he is likely to get bl uh, blinded by either the stuns coming out here from Gomfi or the Candelas. Gomfi could go in for the kill though, but it's very likely he could have the Ying just rush in and get the kill once he's blind. And I'm not sure if there's a grenade still available for Shate if he would like to play that role. Bandit trying to fight against Gomfi, who actually it changes a decent chunk of damage between the two. Pretty equal in it, the C4 being used out, but not really doing much. Gomfi trying to spray through the wall as unfortunately cannot see the leg of the Bandit down on the floor just because... Oh. Uh, but Here we go. It's going to get thrown in. Utility in as well. Boonsi will find one, but it's Hicks from the opposite end. Unfortunately, the smoke kind of more than enough to slow things down for the attack. Gonfi sniffing in that smoke and will go at least be down for a second. Might get picked up, but Rise will find one. Shot is going to get taken down. 10 seconds on the clock. Push has to shove here. Come to shove from ends. Gonfi taken out. Wilkie, last man alive. He'll try to spray it to the side. One second left in advantage for his team as Rise and Hicks will save the day least extend their potential life cycle an extra round and still on map and match point. I gotta say though the uh, the bandit behind the half wall was a big reason that was successful that round just because his ability to hold them back for so long till they had a coordinated attempt to push and then the smoke just with good timing and getting that smoke out as well to make sure that they were kind of just pushing into the smoke absolutely worked out in their favor. But at the same time, I feel like they just they uh, got a little too panicked for the push towards the end as they yeah. started to run out of time. But again, that's why I credit the Bandit, because his ability to slow down their timing on that push for as long as he did, and, and them just getting kind of stalled out on that wall made it much, much harder. And I feel like maybe they needed a bit more of a flank presence to keep everyone busy so they well, could have pushed That's the why they had Shate, but yeah. Shate kind of took a bit too long exactly. to get in his position. It was just missed time. There, was, there wasn't as efficient time management from yeah. Ensa okay, just, as you would expect. And, and I feel like that would have made the difference, especially, let's say they would have gotten the kill on the bandit earlier and then had a shot to in position sooner. I feel like that definitely could have gone the way of Ents. Oh, so I do have a um, full correction from Capel, the coach of the Lustream squad. Uh, they are all at home. They are not playing directly from the team house of Lustream. So are they uh, moving there eventually then? Or? I am not sure. He will have to get even more caught. Wait for it. Yeah, part two of the information. Again, thank you very much to our good friend Cut. Obviously, here's this team on a bit of a. Up on the edge. So they're, they're walking the razor's edge. And it, again, really good spot. the two frag players are the two bottom fraggers at the moment. That, Maybe that's, yep. it's because. There's no drones to support the two yeah, frag players. That's the big problem. Because everybody else is so worried about holding angles instead of allowing them to get really into their flow and in their more frag heavy role. It almost feels like their plan is rather than droning for each other, they they just were like, well, we have two fraggers. One just backs up the other one. Yeah. But they're not trading anytime that, like, Uno dies, you're not seeing the trade come out from aces. And I think that's. It's a big difference, and, that, and that's a problem with frag-heavy teams sometimes, where they have too many fraggers and not enough droners. And that's why we talk about how undervalued support players are. Indeed, indeed. Well, we'll that's see. Why I'm wearing the thermite pin as well. Is that why? Does it does it help? Yeah. Are you my support player? <laughs> we will see the candles coming out again here, potentially oh! to great effect. Well done, Slevin. He'll find the kill, but he gets tagged from the side. Gomfi though, still finding the kill on aces. This is falling apart for the squad of Lustim. Rise coming in from below as he will try to fight the main stairs, but 
It's a foregone conclusion, at least for the armory. This is uh, getting very complicated. Gonfi will go for the reset. And Plenty of time. There you go. More than enough to go for this. Rise might have heard. Oh, man. He might have heard the drop here. But no, Cat the Ash is going to get picked up. Uno actually running with the FMG-9. And Rise very careful to not open fire before there is a confirmed potential kill. Slebin will tap away as Hicks will go down. Still fire all the way into the supply oh, room. Fire no. from Rise will reveal his position. So it will not be enough to handle the uh, sustained rate of fire of the T95. Kandel is going to cover for the plant, though. Yeah, Boonsi just going in for it. Gonfi is right behind him, and you mentioned the Candelas out as well. Uno just running on in. He'll go through the beepers. He just gonna, is going to get spotted by Shate. And we'll go down very easily to the Finn. The old player on the squad. Rise will fire in and take down Gonfi. He's watching all those pre open holes by his opponents and even some by his own team. Wilkie will take out the goo mine off of his foot as Rise so low on health will take even more damage, running all the way into customs and just checking every single position. There's one on the outside watching for, and Slebin will give the information. Spray right in, and Slebin will take down Rise, I have to say. Slebin doing absolutely insane work here for Ents, even as the newcomer. What a stark difference and stark yeah. contrast to what we saw from him and the squad at DreamHack Winter in Sweden not but one month ago. There you go, MVP of the game, and Ents will take the victory. 7-2, our second one here. Of the Very game. impressed with Slubbin. Oh, yes. I mean, look at that. 12 and 10 there for him and Chate. Just, I mean, it feels bad for Ryze because I don't think he should have to be carrying that much for his No, team. not with Aces and Uno, as you said. The two...